Okay, hi everyone. Thank you so much for coming today um, for our very first creative talk. This is so exciting and this is definitely something that we want to continue and have like a whole series for this. Um, get some really cool people from the industry in to chat to you all. So today's topic that we're going to be looking at is shout your truth, find confidence through your style. And we're very, very lucky today to have um, Olivia joining us, Olivia Chen. I'll do a quick intro about her in a second, but I will first start with myself. So hi, everyone. I'm Maddie. You might have seen me in some things popping up. I'm in the design education team for the creators. Um, and I'm based in Sydney. I'm also joined today by Pam, who you should know in your community. Um, and yeah, we'll jump in. So for our session today, I'm going to quickly introduce Olivia um, and then she will introduce herself and uh, talk about today's topic. And then I'm going to do a very short interview with um, Liv afterwards. And during that time, please feel free to pop in any questions that you have about the topic or just for Olivia in general. Um, put those in the Q&A panel. So you'll probably see a little Q&A at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Use that for any of the questions so that they don't get lost in the chat. But feel free to use the chat to just comment throughout. Um, make sure you set that to everybody um, so that everyone can see your chat happening. So then after I do my short interview with Liv, I will uh, jump into answering, uh, getting her to answer your questions. So without further ado, we've got Olivia Chen joining us today. So as you may have all seen in the event invitation, Olivia is the founder and creative director of Studio Chen Chen based here in Sydney. Um, she's from Taiwan originally and has worked in New York, Hong Kong, um, Melbourne as an art director and graphic designer and then made her way to Sydney and started her own studio. Um, she also has a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Pratt Institute in New York, so definitely knows what she's talking about. So we're very, very excited to have her um, doing our first creative talk. So I will hand it over to Olivia now. Hi everyone, I'm so glad. I'm kind of surprised that how many people are popping in. I'm from different parts of the world. It's really interesting. It's really fun. So yes, I'm gonna uh, share my screen, but I am just to say hi again. I'm Olivia Chen. I am the founder and creator of Studio Chen Chen. We're really small. Uh, for a while, it was just me and my husband working on our studio. And this year, we recently got two interns. So it feels like um, it's totally changed my work schedule, which is fine. <laughs> but um, yes, just, just to share with you guys um, and some background about Studio Chen Chen. Yes, we are pretty small, but let's give us lots of freedom and lots of um, fun to do um, you know, to work on the project we love to work, like we, we, we love. So um, let me just share my screen. And yes, I also created this presentation with Canva. I was just talk, talking to uh, Maddie, how Maddie and Pam, how, how great this tool is. Definitely the best tool, the best presentation tool that I um, have used. Uh, another thing to let you guys know is I live in Merrickville in the West Sydney. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sydney, but this is where the air is very close to the airport. And then uh, we have air pass, you know, the, the flight pass over. So sometimes you might hear some annoying background, uh, background noise, just ignore it. So um, today I, I want to talk about uh, my, you know, uh, how do I find my creative style and how I find confidence in, in creative practice through, through this process. Um, I feel like it's, um, I feel like it's only, only necessary or appropriate, I don't know, to show you uh, my influences. So this is kind of like a snippet of what's in my brain. So this is all, you know, these things happen all the time simultaneously. But as you guys, as Mary just say, I was uh, originally from Taiwan. I grew up there. So I, I was there until I was 16. Uh, and, and after that, I moved to South Dakota 
in the United States for my high school exchange program. So I lived in South Dakota for a year. So it's really crazy, you know, from Taiwan to South Dakota, you might think it's a huge um, cultural shift or cultural shock, but it was okay because we all know, you know, American culture is everywhere. And also um, globalization really do help for, for me when I was in Taiwan, I do, I do learn a lot about American culture, you know, Hollywood, pop music. Um, also like my favorite band growing up was Spice Girls, you know, so you, you get idea. So it's, it's not that much of a cultural shock, but I do have to say it, it helped me uh, getting to know to more indie stuff. You know, I get to know um, that's not not a, uh, I get to know the America that's not so obvious to the rest of the world. Uh, and after America, I moved to uh, after South Dakota, I moved to Boston to finish my high school. Then I moved to New York for for college for uni, and then finished uni and worked there for a while. So and then you know and then moved to Hong Kong and then back to um, back to Taiwan for a little bit and then now in Australia. So it's, it's like a long journey, but throughout the um, throughout all, each places, my experience in each places, I started to, dis, to, to figure out something that's, um, I started to learn something that I didn't know before. Uh, and that's more, that really shift my attitude in life. And also just like, you know, and I'll, I'll show you later like what I mean by that. But I feel like people who have traveled or people who have lived in a different part of the world definitely understand this journey. This like, you kind of become more open-minded on the, uh, while, you, while you're traveling. Anyway, so this is just like a mood board of who I am. Um, it's literally from my uh, Instagram. So all of these pictures is just uh, from my private Instagram where I share randomly, you know, if people who follow my private Instagram will know so many random posts in there. Um, yeah, so this is one example I want to tell to, uh, talk to you guys about. So when I was traveling and also throughout the whole experience, you know, I, I realized that um, the opinion about certain aesthetics changes depending on who the viewer is, right? So something like for this, which is everywhere right now, the, the yin yang, the yin yang symbol in Taoism, which was something that's very close to home when I was in Taiwan. And it's something that's really almost icky, almost like too kitsch, you know, too, it's too um, familiar and it's not something that I would consider fashionable. But now um, with a little bit of update and with a little bit of like, a, I guess, um, uh, tweak now, in Yen is become a subcultural trend that's everywhere. And I have this pair of shoes myself, actually. So it's just like, wow, something I didn't know could be um, uh, fashionable is actually fashionable. So this is just like how globalization can change, how you know people can interchange um, symbols, they can interchange cultural influence, and how it might change the way you perceive something that you didn't know. Also, another funny thing, I just had to put this there. It's so funny. It's just like, well, what you think is appropriate in one culture can be completely inappropriate in another culture. So this is, uh, I grew up watching Sailor Moon. So uh, I, I watched the Japanese version of Sailor Moon. So we're so used to look seeing this, this in, uh, in Japanese cartoon. But then when, when I went to USA, I, I, it was shocked to me. It was shocking to me to see how uh, conservative most United States, in, in, most American people are, to be honest, like, especially when it comes to cartoon, which is for kids. Uh, I wanna share with you just um, something I did in, in uni. Uh, so this is in my junior year, which is the third year of university. Um, and I, I feel like in terms of uni work, they really, sh because you are not so used to um, com the computer, you're not so used to trends. You are, you know, right now I have been working for 15 years, so it's a bit, of 14 years, it's been jaded, right? Like my aesthetic, what I consider as a good design is, is been jaded, I feel. So this is kind of like example of how I approach a project when I was um, only learning design for the third year. Um, so I did this for a campaign. I was really into uh, Bob Dylan at the time. <laughs> so, uh, so I decided to make a Bob Dylan campaign, which is I hand, hand written all of the lyrics from I think I must I must have written maybe 20 or 25 songs from Bob Dylan's and um, 
the reason I did that is because I wasn't that good in in typesetting um, on the computer. So in the end, I was like, why don't I just, you know, my first reaction was to use my hand and to hand hand reach and hand, hand transcribe all of the lyrics. And in the end, I, I really liked the effect, right? And then um, and it wasn't, an, I mean, it's an accident, but it's not, because I feel like it's just something that I feel comfortable doing when I was um, young. Another thing I wanna share with you is also from the same year, um, junior year in uni, the third year. Um, I also, because you know, what, echoing what I just said before, I really feel like this shift of opinions only happens, um, I guess every, every different people have different opinions. And just because other people's opinion is, is different, sometimes lots of conflicts happens this way, right? Uh, and I wanted to make a poster about it. So um, I, I use uh, Jean Renoir's um, quote here to, to make a poster. But then again, my first reaction is to, um, to make lot, a lot of shouting, shouting mouth with, with pencil, with color pencils. So I just decided to draw all these weird mouths shouting, you know, like yucky mouths shouting at each other. And I decided, oh, wow, okay, I'll, I'll just put it on my poster. And in the end, I was trying to um, create this hole, this like this poke, this, you know, I poke, I, I tried different things, you know, lots of fake Photoshop, uh, mockups, whatever, but it didn't, it didn't work. So in the end, I was frustrated. I just poke a hole through the poster a real hole and I realized but why don't I just do that so I scan uh, I scanned the hole that I poked and I put it on my poster so um, now after 13 years or 14 years I, I don't I can't remember but like after like now when I look back at this it's quite interesting because I do like I mean not the design but I do like the, the, the mouse that I draw and it's kind it's quite interesting I was like wow I can actually Use, use some of this mouth in some of my project. It, it, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't age. It, that, it, it's actually pretty good. Um, yes, so that was my college projects. But now I wanna show you how, um, you know, throughout my 13 years of practicing um, and also working in the field, sometimes I do feel like um, we get locked, um, we get stuck in a certain style and, and you know, I feel like it's really hard to sometimes go back to find like what's ori what's originally interesting to you when you were younger. But anyway, so I just want to show you one of my recent projects, and and this is an example of how I solve the problem by being true to myself, to my creative style. Um, so I got this project just last year. Actually, it was pro bono project. Um, it's a uh, it's for uh, African design. It's an African fashion design platform. Uh, Ajwa, they are actually selling high end clothing just from um, African designers, fashion designers. And um, I I took I took on this project as pro bono because I, I feel like this is a really interesting cause, um, especially when we all know that the fashion industry is overwhelmingly white and and a lot of the high-end fashion designer actually do take, they take inspiration from, from black culture without crediting them, you know, like the, a lot of cultural appropriation is happening in, in, um, in the fashion industry. And also fashion industry comes with lots of, you know, dodgy practice in terms of human rights, work rights, and how um, sustainable it is, right? So Aja actually also have a, very heavy vetting system to vet how the products have been made. So is this ethically made, is this sustainable? So they have really, really good um, impact. I feel like it's a great change in the fashion industry. So um, yes, of course, being a cheesy um, JD graphic designer, my first ideas is to create a bunch of weird crests. So I, I created a bunch of um, what I think would be it's like, you know, it's, it's acceptable, right? It's vector, it's beautiful, it's clean. Um, and then I use, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get inspiration from all over the place. I get inspiration from uh, the botanics, the, the uh, botanicals from Africa. But then after, you know, you, I feel like you all see this before. And in a way, I feel like I was cultural appropriating the African culture. I feel like I was like taking things from them without any 
um, thinking behind or any, I felt it's just a trend. And then um, after I did this, I wasn't happy about it at all, but I just, I got stuck. So uh, I, stu I stood up of the, of the studio. And it was during the time when in Sydney that we have this um, beautiful exhibition now, it's called Nearing, N-I-R-I-N. I think it's like an exhibition, art exhibition, celebrating uh, these artists or designer of colors and from you know different cultural background. So I was lucky enough when I went to MCA, which is a big uh, museum in Sydney, I went into um, the, the gallery and as soon as I stepped into the gallery, I saw this beautiful, beautiful painting from a Zimbabwe artist. And I'm gonna butcher her, his name because I don't really know how to pronounce his name, but uh, Misha Masumu. But when I saw the painting, it was huge. And I, uh, I, I talked to my, my husband was with me, but immediately when I saw the painting standing in front of me, I was like, wow. I just, I was just, this is it, this is so cool. And then I talked to my husband, I said, this is what I need to do for Ashra. And then I read this artist statement, which is uh, uh, Mish 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 Mishke was, was saying how he was trying to break the colonial ideal of beauty, I guess. Like, you know, he was trying to um, change using a, a colonial device, but break it apart. To be, um, and then I was like, this is really interesting. This is just the same thing I want to do. So I decided to chose a colonial device, which is a crest. Uh, we all, I think we are all familiar with crest. It's really um, Anglo-Saxon European tradition to have a crest for your royal family, right? And then I was like, I want to create a crest, but then like, just like what Mishka is doing, I want to kind of using the crest, but then break, break it apart and challenge the, um, the whole idea of how fashion industry has been practicing their business. So it's all kind of re related. Uh, so I decided, I, I went back to my, again, my first response is to use my hand and draw a bunch of pictures. I'm not even a good drawer. I feel like I was, and what, what's worse is I don't even draw, this is tracing. So I was tracing, I was tracing lots of pictures, lots of the uh, botanic image I found. I, I just tried to, this, this is my inspiration time. So I didn't even give myself a limit. I just tracing everything, anything I can find that's related to Africa. And then, um, and then after, after that, I scan them in. So this is just tracing with ink and paper, and I scan them into my computer and start to making this collage. You know, how do I make this branch? Uh, and you know, I, I put, put together a, a bunch of crests. So it looks like a crest, but it's really not what you would traditionally think of a crest, right? Because it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a crown, it doesn't have a majestic lions. It's really just the botanics and the banners. They say a story retold, which is the concept we're going for. Um, retelling a story for African designers. And this is the end result. And as soon as I did this, I was like, I was so proud. I was like, this is it. I, I don't even, this is so authentic to me. If I feel like this is my um, authentic reactions to, to what the founders is doing, what the business is doing. Um, but before I present to her, I did, I did get scared. I, I was quite scared to present this to her because I was like, I don't know what her perception of fine uh, professional graphic design is this. I don't know if he will, she will think this is professional, if this is refined, but you know what? I, it feel right to me. So I presented to her. She absolutely loved it. We didn't even have to do any changes. This is just done. Like it was so good. And so such a quick response um, from her, which is just, I should love it. Um, so we work on this for a while and then now it's, it's, it's finished and it comes, it came to the time when I have to publish it on my website and also publish it on my Instagram. And I got scared again. I was like, I don't know what the industry, what the other designer is going to think of this. It's not really professional. Is it professional? What I think this is refined because it's just not what we used to when we see graphic design. We were so used to look at beautiful, clean cuts, uh, minimal graphic design, right? But I did it, and and to be honest, it, I got lots of um, positive positive feedback. But to be honest, if, even if I haven't, it doesn't really affect how I feel about this project because I went through that process, being true to myself and um, getting inspired by something that's more than just a trend. So that was um, that was Azure. Another one, and uh, this is a second um, pro second project that 
echo the similar stories, but this one is more extreme. And it's probably because I was less experienced back then. This is the, my first project when I moved to Sydney, I think it was five years ago, my first freelance project for Studio Chen Chen, I think. Um, but yes, um, and you'll see it's really, it's quite a funny journey, but this project is for a film festival in, um, in Glaston, in Queensland. If you guys don't know anything about Australia, uh, Glaston is a tiny industrial town in Queensland. And um, what they're gonna do is they're gonna do a, a bunch of tra a traveling short film, film festival where everyone can submit their work. Uh, they, they, um, they are open to anyone from amateur status to professional status. So when I did attend the film festival, um, I actually went to the film festival to take a look and see what's going on, you know, before I design. And I realized it's really, I got really inspired by the fact that you can see middle school students, you know, high school students using their iPhone, using the camera to tell their story. So none of the, their, none of their props is professional, but it doesn't really matter. It's more about getting your foot in the door, getting, uh, getting a taste of what filmmaking is like. So I really, I was really impressed. I remember flying back home, feeling like all the boss about all these young people loving filmmaking, right? So again, being, uh, it, uh, being influenced by trends back then. I was like, okay, so it's a film festival for young people. What am I gonna do? Um, so I decided to do a bunch of emoji, <laughs> how original. So I was like, okay, young people love emoji. Uh, they, they, they're always online, right? So it was, you know, borrowing uh, elements from, you know, from the, come from, you know, from uh, internet, browser. <laughs> emoji all that stuff anyway I, I did this and is it pretty it is pretty is it professionally done it is professionally done I was like, this, is, this is okay so I presented it to the clients of course he doesn't like it he hates it actually so he was like Olivia I want more guts this is like this is trendy but this is soulless I want more guts the reason I picked you and you're from from a, a pool of uh, portfolios is because I saw like some sort of you know um guts he keeps saying guts I was like what is that I keep saying uh, something different from your work, and this is really um, normal. This is really boring. So I said, okay, you want more guts? I'm just gonna put more guts in it. So this is my <laughs> this is my um, uh, solution for this is what I mean by putting more guts. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll make the icon pixelated. <laughs> And I'll make, uh, you know, lots of old post postcards from Glaston and then weird, I don't know, I said, okay, this is cool, this is, this is pretty 70s, this is pretty, um, pretty uh, colorful, so I sent this to him, and he was like, no, this is so inauthentic, he hates it, he was like, stop thinking about what's cool, what other people think is cool, can you just do something that's cool, that you think is cool yourself, I said, I don't know, I was like, totally confused. And then he told me uh, he, when he went through my portfolio, he really loved the Asian aesthetics I have. I was like, I don't even know I have an Asian aesthetics in my designs. So I was like, I was really confused. And then, so he, he was like, he keeps saying that like, Asian aesthetic, Asian aesthetic. So I, I went back and I said, okay, you want Asian aesthetic? I will give you Asian aesthetic. <laughs> so I went back to look at Japanese minimal graphic design and I did something just, yeah, pretty minimal, really different from what I usually do. Uh, but I just feel like this is what he wants. I was, and of course, this is also trends, right? Um, I still find a way to keep my emoji in here. <laughs> Snapchat was really cool by then. Uh, anyway, so uh, I said, I present this to him and he, we, he called me immediately and he had, we had a really, really hard conversation. He was like, um, can I get my deposit back? And I was like, no, I was like, you can't get your deposit back. This is what deposit is. So I was like, you know what? Since you can't get your money back, if you're going to drop me, why not just give me one last shot? So just like, and this time, let's just be frank. Like what is missing and what, what you're looking for? Because he wouldn't give me any directions that's concrete, right? He would just keep saying, have more guts, be yourself. I love your portfolio. I love your work. Just bring that. I was like, I don't really don't know what it is. So he told me something that I think is quite amazing. I mean, you know, a lot of times you can really learn from 
from a difficult clients. I feel like sometimes it's, there's a reason why your client is difficult. It's because, you know, I don't know, you're meant to learn something from them. But anyway, he was like, can you just do something that you always wanted to do, but never find the reason or the clients or the project to do it? Just something you, you want to do, always wanted to do. So immediately, I was so happy he said that because immediately I was like, my, you know, my brain exploded. I was like, yes, I always wanted to make little figurine of, um, <laughs> I always wanted to make this little figurine. Uh, and I was, I, I really love Gauguin and Matisse painting. So I decided to make, um, to make the, the paintings, the woman's, the figures in the paintings life by making these paper mache sculptures. And also, this is my first time doing sculptures. I never sculptured before, uh, but I was like, you know, how hard can it be? Just paper mache. So I bought a bunch of paper mache. I start um, molding this weird, uh, I guess, woman from, from Matisse painting. Uh, and then I painted them afterward. And then I don't even know how to properly, I, I think you had to bake them in the oven or something, but I didn't do that. I just let them air dry. And then in the end, it was super dodgy. I, I purchased this polish, this shine, shining spray, and I just spray it on top of them so they look like they are they've been baked or they've been um, properly, you know, you know, put in the oven. But anyway, I did that, and then I decided to put a bunch of figurines together, and then I was um, uh, there was a, a an attic in in the apartment I was rented at the time, so I just went and it has beautiful sunlight. So I just went up to the attic and set up my little set. And I was like, this is kind of cool, right? This is kind of like me being a director or being a filmmaker, creating my own set. And these little, little sculptures were like my actress, my actors, my props. So I was like almost setting out my props, like a, like a filmmaker, like a director. So in the end, this is the end result. I, I, um, um, I, I found some, I just, I just did multiple iterations of the, um, arrangement for the photos, and then I use um, handwritten typography. I just I, I wrote it myself to kind of finish it off, and I sent it to the client, and he was like, "Yes, this is what I was looking for. This is it." And he's been using this for his um, film festival ever since, and it was a success. And I was also really happy with this. So. I guess um, what I, this is just like two projects from, um, from the lesson I have learned, but I feel like I want to end my presentation with some quotes that I really love, that really inspire me. So Stefan Sengmeister once said, who's a very famous graphic designer, but he once said that everyone who is honest is interesting. And I think that really resonates with me because um, it's true. Like if you just follow the trends, if you just think what you're supposed to do, it's hard, it's very hard to be original and to be truth and authentic of who you are. So I really love that quote. Another quote from uh, a book I'm reading right now, it's from Ernest Hemingway, and he's talking about writing here, but I think actually it will work for anyone in, in any creative practice. He said, all you have to do is write one true sentence, write the truest sentence that you know. And I think this is great, just that you know he's talking about how he started writing anything. So I know we always say that, you know, there's these things that people do uh, to, is to write a letter to uh, a younger you. I, okay, what you have learned and write a letter to tell them, you know, what, what to do, what not to do. Um, but I feel like it should be the other way around because without the 17 year old you trying so hard, um, being brave, being open-minded, trying every experience, um, going through the process, you wouldn't be who you are today. So sometimes we forget, we forget our original passion, our original, like why we become a designer and what we love. So I feel like maybe sometimes if you are stuck, if you feel like you can't go on as a des designing anymore, go back to find the inspiration from the 17 year old you. And that's it. Amazing. Thanks so much, Liv. That was awesome. Um, I was just living that journey. That was <laughs> incredible. Like when you kept getting like the knockbacks and everything. Um, a lot of love in the chat as well. Um, everyone was loving seeing your journey. So thank you so much. Um, really, really cool. 
Um, while I just ask Olivia some questions, please feel free to start popping in some questions into the Q&A panel if you have anything that came up from the chat and we'll get to that next. Um, oh, lots of love coming in in the chat. Everyone's loving seeing your face. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a few things that came up for me in that, which was really interesting, was like this coming back to trends. And I think um, even when you said the client said to you, like, it's trendy, but soulless. Do you think as designers, we fall into that trap a lot? And like, how do you kind of stop yourself from getting into that trap? Yeah, I think, of course, I mean, trend is not bad. I'm not saying trend is bad, right? Um, <laughs> And we do see trends everywhere, even in, in fashion. If you, if you live in the world, you can't just, you can't avoid trends. But I think what I would say is just like how you will um, do when you are wearing your clothes, you don't just take whatever that's the most fashionable, the most trendy that you see on the magazine and put it on you because it wouldn't feel right, right? So I think it's the same with the projects. I maybe just never get trends by like choosing clothes for your clients. Does this clothes fit the clients? Does this actually um, helps them to kind of express who they are as a brand or as a as a design, as you know, as a person? Um, yeah, so just choose your trends carefully, then trend is not that bad. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, great advice. I think as well, I'd love to hear your advice on um, inspiration. So kind of on that same wavelength. Um, like you kind of talked through different areas that you get inspiration. So um, mm. what are some of the things that inspire you and where do you find that? Yeah, so I think uh, one way to kind of avoid copying other designers, and I have fallen to that um, trap before as well, is to not look at, um, not only get your inspiration from design blocks, Sometimes it's more important to get inspiration from art, from architecture, from film, something that's a bit in, not in our industry. And this way, the that your response to the inspiration will be like the first digestion, you know what I mean? Like the first mm -hmm. um, reaction to that. So it's not like someone already took something from art, from fashion, from uh, architecture, and then did something on their own. And then you take inspiration from them. So you, you're like the second-handed uh, work from from the, from the same inspiration right so a lot of time i found it's probably a lot easier to not get caught you know uh, following trends or like copying other people's design by taking inspiration somewhere outside of the industry yes totally yeah. i think that's a really really great point because um i think even uh, like for the creators tuning in right now, um, like with Canva being such a massive library and so many different trends and styles coming through in the library, it can be tempting to just look at that for inspiration. But I love what you're saying, like just, you know, look at other forms like art, architecture, anything. It's um, really, really cool to sort of step out and look at other forms for inspiration. Um, I think it was really cool how you said the line, like, what do you want to do? So like, you know, really kind of helping that um, frame your style as well. Um, and I was going to say for the creators as well, I think that's a great thing with um, like your templates. You don't have a client telling you what you need to do. You can kind of be doing what you want to do. So that was really great to hear, Liv. Um, is that something that you kind of approach every project with? Yes, I think um, I think whenever I, I do a project, my first goal is always to be a little bit different. I don't want to be original. It's too hard, right? I'm not saying I'm not giving myself this impossible task to be 100% original, but I will give myself this goal to um, be maybe even just one little tiny different from whatever that you see that's happening in the world, and then hopefully that a little bit differentiation can already can make the a project feel more refreshed and more refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Cool. yeah. Especially when there's so many type of template that is doing similar things. Can you just do that one thing that's a little bit different from, from the same thing? Maybe that will um maybe that will help you to stand out from, you know, people will look at your project and realize it's something different in there. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, and 
you mentioned about like having inspiration time, like when you're starting a project, like how much time do you actually spend researching, um, getting inspiration? Like, yeah, how much time do you dedicate to that? Yeah, so it definitely depends on how familiar I am with the subject matters and how serious the project is. I, I, I would say not every project has to be uh, research, you know, so thoroughly. Like for example, for the um, for Azra, I research a lot just because it's not my culture, and I really want to respect that. I had lots of interview with the clients. I work very closely with the clients. Um, so that part I really research a lot. But then for something maybe for like an Asian restaurant, Taiwanese restaurant, which is my culture, which I'm really familiar with, then it's fine. But I think the plain exploration time only comes. Uh, it's it's relative to how fast you solve the problem. Like sometimes I did something and in my first go, I love what I did, and I I feel like when you feel when you did it, when you when when you um when you did something good, you know deep down you're mm -hmm. like yeah, this is a good day's work, and I'm done. But when it's not there, when it's just wish you wash it, you know too, you'll be like oh, I can hand this to the client, or I can I can publish this, but do I want to do that? Um, you know. I feel like we, we are our best critique because we all know uh, what's our ability and what we can do, right? Uh, so if I feel like it's not there yet and no one is telling me it's not there yet, maybe the clients love it, but I still feel like this is not there. And then I will just need more time to go back to that researching exploration phase. Yeah, that's so true. Um, yeah, I mean, pop in the chat if you guys feel that same way as well, but I know definitely in my designs, it's that intuition you kind of get that like oh yeah this isn't right <laughs> kind yeah. Of thing. yeah and that comes back to the whole topic it's like having that confidence in your creative style and it does become tricky with clients because you have to fulfill a brief but um that's why it's really cool for our creators because you've got this open format for these templates like you can kind of come up with that style and play with different things um you also talked about kind of just back to that research uh, that you were talking about, um, like saying that just being aware of context and different audiences. Um, yeah, that's so true, especially, you know, with Canva, we've got a global audience. We've got people using Canva all over the world. So um, does that come back to your research or how have you kind of dealt with that in your work? Uh, sorry, what was the question? Sort of like thinking about that context and being mindful yeah. of different cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely, you, you can't design anything without knowing the context. You can't even do one single Instagram post without knowing what's the purpose of the post and like who is going to do, um, who is the target audience, right? I really do believe that. And then, so, yeah, I think we live in a really amazing time, which is, you know, internet. And, you know, there's lots of tools out there for us to learn a lot about different things. And I think the reason I love being a graphic designer is also because of that. Every project I'm learning different new things. Um, and yeah, so definitely research um, before you know, or even have, I know you guys are, um, you don't have, necessarily have a client, but definitely look at, okay, what would my possible, what would the possible people who purchase my template or use my template be? Uh, will that be, you know, you can come up with your own target audience. Mm. Because there's a different type of industry. There's, you know, maybe you can make the most amazing corporate template and another one for the fashion industry, another one for, you know, uh, for personal branding, right? So I think that would be a great, um, you know, make a like, self-initiated target audience. Yeah, that's such yeah. a great point. Yeah, I think that can be really helpful. Um, like, yes, there is so much freedom in not having a client and not having a brief. But then there's that just openness. So sometimes it can be helpful to give yourself a scope. So give yourself um, like some context, some yeah. a target audience. A kind and of you will theme. see open brief is the hardest thing. I can't do open brief. Like um, mm -hmm. for, for the film festival, it was kind of like an open brief because he, he all, all he says to, is to give him something cool, something, you know, authentic. And then it's an open brief. It's so hard for me to do. I think sometimes if that's, that's the case, give yourself the limits. Yeah, such good advice. Mm. Cool. Thanks, Olivia. I will get to these um, questions in the Q&A panel. Please feel free to um, put any questions in. We will get to them now. So 
First question is coming from Tanya. Um, how would you explain to a new designer the difference between getting inspiration versus copying from someone else's design? Yeah, it's a very hard question. And I think from my experience, when we're younger or when we're just starting designing, we're so scared of copying. I feel like we're even more critical of ourselves of copying other people. Uh, but when we get more experience, we, we get a different, we, we understand the difference between getting inspiration and the boundary you can do, right? Um, but I think don't, it's impossible to be original nowadays, but I would say if you are copying someone's, because you love their, let's say co color scheme, then just take one thing from them. Don't, don't also take the typography style or don't take the layout style. Just take one thing from them and then you need to find another inspiration and take also one thing from them. If you just mix and match and make your own, then I don't think that's copying, right? Let's just kind of um, um, get an inspiration. So, but if you are copying more than one element from the one designer, then that's kind of um, from one design work that, that's really obvious and and I have done that before and it's, it, got, it, it got me in trouble. So this is from personal experience. Just take, if you only take one thing, push, off your, push, push yourself harder to not take another thing from the same design. Yeah, yeah. That's very good advice. Um, next question is, do you have any tips on overcoming creative anxiety and how to be brave to try out something more authentic to you? Hmm. So uh, I definitely, I also have creative anxiety. I think everyone does. And uh, being a young designer before, I, when I was, you know, being a young designer, it was also really scary. You don't know if anything you do is any good. And also we don't get that much um, reinforcement from the society. What I would do is to just, um, I think once you find, found your style, when, once you found that this is, if this feel authentic to me, I'm not just copying other trends, then, then it's like an inherent confidence you will have and you will fight for your design. And also if you have seen more about this industry, if you see more design, you know, you know what's going on, you can come, you can put your design and in comparison with other design and you still feel like really strong about your design, then maybe it's good design, you know, just trust yourself. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, uh, Tanya saying in the chat, I feel like I have a million styles sometimes because I like to try new things. Me Great. too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. But I think, uh, but I think we, but there's definitely something you feel more authentic to. Even if you try new thing, which is like a new, new device, new style, go back to that, um, uh, the concept maybe, go back to that, uh, having opinions about something. You know, if you want to, if you approach a design brief as like solving a problem, having an opinion, having a concept, then, then it doesn't matter how many styles you try, you, you try, it will still be, you will still feel authentic to you. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's great to try out new things because then you do find what your strengths are and what you're comfortable with and, and what appeals to you and maybe how you then adapt that even further with your style. So mm. yeah, I think it is great to try things. Um, what is the strangest place you have found inspiration? <laughs> yes, lots of strangest places. Um, we, I think internet is amazing. I found so many <laughs> genius creativity from in, internet memes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love memes and you can see from the board I just show you in the beginning of my presentation. Uh, I, I love um, I love to find inspiration sometimes from like movies, but also like horror movies sometimes, you know, like you can always find things anywhere you go, but the weirdest things will probably just be Reddit internet memes. <laughs> <laughs> True, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Uh, um so another question here would love to know some of your favorite tools for workflow and staying focused and on task yeah I don't um I'm not big on tools in this kind of things you know like um you, when you say workflow you mean like project management and also um and time 
keeping the time sheet, right? I use, um, I do use, I think the only program program I use is um, stream time um, or streamline, streamline, stream time. I think it's called stream, stream time. Yes, it's a, it's a really cool and easy to use tool to kind of uh, record my hours if some of my clients are hourly based. But most of my clients are project based. So I don't need to really do that. And to stay focused, I think uh, if you are happy, I feel like it's really easy to stay focused if you really love what you do. If you, you feel like this project is getting you that um, satisfaction, it's getting you that love, then, then, then you there's it's not that hard for me to stay focused if that's the case. But it's really hard for me to stay focused if I already gave up the project or if I already like, decided that I don't like this project anymore, then then there's really nothing else you can do. Yeah, I think yeah. that comes back to even what you kept repeating to your talk about like being true to yourself and mm. like coming back to that sort of style thing and having confidence in your style. It's um, really hard, I think, when you are, I don't know, even mimicking a trend or not being authentic, like that can also make you lose sight of the project and be like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. And also like going back to the confidence, knowing that opinions changes, like graph design is very subjective practice. Um, yes, there is some standard to make you a design, a professional, a good design, but a lot of times it's very subjective. So just because if you think it's a good design and if you love what you do, just put your, put your work out there and someone else will think the same. Yeah, lovely advice. Okay, um, the final question, if no one has any more questions, still time if you wanna pop any in, but um, this one's coming from Anna. Do you have your favorite places for research? Yes. Um, you mean research for like in, for getting inspiration or research for the background of the projects? That's if it's true. research, yeah. yeah we sort of background, like sort of getting context about. Yeah, so the first things I do definitely is Wikipedia, right? Like everyone, but then <laughs> later on, it's good to go to, um, I don't wanna say like, oh, I go to the library or anything. No, but most of the time I just like look at, um, for example, for Azure, I did lots of research in um, on Wikipedia from the clients and also knowing some fashion designers um, in Africa. So I went into their website. So a lot of times, and but if I'm designing for a, for a restaurant or for a, um, a donut shop, like right now I'm working on a donut shop, I actually love to go to um, uh, their Google review for 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 research to know what's wrong with the with the business what's uh, how uh, how the business is being perceived by the customer right now mm, yeah. Super so, interesting. Yeah. yeah but i don't know uh, i feel like a lot of time i don't need to do like that you know crazy academic research so i don't really know but mm -hmm. for inspiration i love to get inspiration or research for different trends from art right from art trends because i feel like it kind of trickled down to fashion and then to graphic design um and also films i love i love getting inspiration from films yeah cool um and next question that's just come in is how about rejection of your project how do you manage your feelings yeah um you just have to know that your clients doesn't hate you uh right or, or people who reject you they don't hate you like it's nothing personal uh, of course it's really hard i will give myself maybe one day to uh to feel low to to like absolutely um, feel bad about myself. I just give myself like a time limit of how self-loathing I can be. <laughs> and then and not thinking about the project for the whole day. And then the next day, just knowing that you need to take it back and um, look at it as a new perspective. Sometimes I think we are so caught up on the things we make and we, we, we feel so precious about our, the things we make that we don't want to throw it away, right? So I think, you know, going back to like fine artists practice, when they don't like something, when they do something they don't like, they completely throw their canvas away and then they don't even, you know, try to save it. So a lot of times if, and that's what I did, you know, I, uh, a lot of times is when I get um, 
rejection from the clients and I realize it's not like right, the clients is kind of right, uh, then I just need to not be so precious about my work. Mm. Open and a that, new file and then do it over again. Yeah, it's it yeah. definitely is a hard thing. Like I think designers, we definitely have um, to have those strong backbones <laughs> like <laughs> to take that critique. Um, yeah. But it is just part of it. And as you say, like I, I, I also don't think it's personal. Like it's just kind of iterating on the solution and hopefully getting to that final place where everyone's happy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much, Olivia. Um, that I'll wrap up the Q and A um part. Thank you, everyone, for submitting a question. And um, yeah, again, thank you, Olivia, for answering all of thank those. You. Um. All right. So yeah, as I said, big thank you so much, Olivia, for coming today and sharing your presentation with us. It was absolutely amazing. Lots of love in the chat, as I said. Um. So so good to have you here. And thank you again, everyone, for attending. It's been awesome to have you here and asking questions. Um, we will put out a recording of this for anyone who wasn't able to make it to the live one or if you want to watch it again and get some more inspiration from Olivia. But thank you so, so much. That's a wrap. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.